Hey guys, it's DC here and today I want to talk to you about how good you have to be to get into the cybersecurity industry. Alrighty, so I'm trying something new today and I've, uh, I've got this extra screen here with some notes so I can sort of go through it with you guys to explain how hard it is to get into cybersecurity and what you need to be good at or what areas you need to focus on to get into cybersecurity. So when getting into a cybersecurity position, you need to look at a few things. The first one of those is networking. Now I'm breaking this down into two different areas. One is the knowledge level. So the level of information that you need to have on hand in your brain as well as the uh, actual hands-on skills. So the knowledge level is probably mid-range. I'd say around a five, and I would consider five uh, something that someone who has a CCNA or has done a CompTIA Security Plus, uh, Network Plus, sorry. Either one of those certs, you're around level five. You know all of the information, but you don't have too much um, actual experience using it. So your hands-on skill level is pretty low, it's around a three. Now, I'm not saying that you don't need to know networking to get into cybersecurity. You definitely need to know networking, but it's, it, and it's probably the most important part of cybersecurity, to be completely honest. But you don't actually need to use it that much on the job. You just need to have the knowledge there to know that you're capable of doing the jobs that are required of you. And it depends what sort of role you're getting to into like a SOC or if you're going into pen testing or maybe something completely different, maybe going into bug bounties. Um, it depends on, again, then what sort of bounties you're going to want to do as to what sort of knowledge you need to have in. So I'd say hands on skill level, like smashing down commands <laughs> in the uh, in the CLI or, you know, actually going through and when someone asks you a question, you go, oh, actually, I have read about this before and I'd say it's this or this or whatever it is. So. Knowledge level five, skill level three. Now the next one up is Linux and how much Linux knowledge do you need to have going into cybersecurity and how much skill level do you need? Now this one is, I'd say it's pretty much the same actually as networking, but again, it depends on what role. So I'm just gonna be basing this off like an entry level position that people are getting into. So sort of, getting into cybersecurity, how much information do you need to know? Now, knowledge level on this one is probably a little bit higher. I'd say around a six, but your hands-on skill level, probably a two. And I know that's gonna cause all sorts of disruption in my comments, but to be honest, you don't really even need to use Linux at all. And in most places, they don't use Linux in cybersecurity environments. Unless you actually want to, or like you, you're in a specific team that's working on some sort of virtualized firewall or uh, whatever system it is that is run in Linux, your actual skill level of Linux, it can be super low. You can learn most of that stuff while you're on the job and just get through it and, and do it. You'll learn what you need to know when you're in the job. But your knowledge level needs to be a little bit high because you need to understand how these things work. So when you're reading through different logs and a lot of the logging systems are open source Linux software. You do need to understand sort of what you're looking at and how this system works to be able to defend it better or to penetrate it better. It works both ways with either defensive or offensive security. It's, it's not just like, you don't need to be an absolute gun at bash, but it would definitely help if you were. And of course, these are like the, the minimums, right? So go into it thinking like that. Number three on the list is people skills. And this is something that I think gets missed out on a lot. And people skills are very important to have. When you go into meetings, you want to be able to present yourself properly. You want to be able to articulate what you want to say so that the point gets across quickly and efficiently. You don't want to be scrambling around, talking shit for ages and management's getting upset. Your boss is going, why did I hire this guy? He can't even tell me what the problem is. You need to have people skills. Also, being a very personable person, bringing those people in to believe in whatever you're telling them is definitely a skill to have, especially in cybersecurity. 
and especially if you end up going to a risk and compliance meeting where you're telling those guys that they need to do something and they're coming back saying we don't want to do this we don't have budget we don't have this you want to have those people skills so knowledge level I don't think there's actually any knowledge I think it's just a, a skill that you obtain by talking with people over and over so I'll just give that a mid-range five because I don't really know what sort of knowledge level you can have on people skills unless of course you're going into social engineering uh, exercises where you want to talk with people to convince them to do something else then I guess that would be a little bit higher but we'll say five as a, a broad level for the knowledge level that you need the hands-on skill level is definitely high up there on a seven so as I said you need to be able to articulate to the customers or to your clients or to your fellow staff what you want to get across to them if you can't do that and you're not a very personable person maybe practice a little bit and this is where prior jobs comes in so for people who have worked in like a bar or you know working with people and talking with them all day in whatever other positions they have these people shine in cyber security and not just cyber security but pretty much every job in IT because the staff they don't like talking to that guy who's holed up in in the IT room and he's like pale as hell right and he's He's all patchy and he doesn't like talking. He's like, Ugh, you go away. No one likes that guy. But they do like the guy who comes out and goes, Hey, yeah, I'm happy to help you. I'm here. What would you like? Oh, yeah, no problems. I'll get to it straight away. You know, come and see me, blah, blah, blah. Let's have a chat. They love it because it's someone that they can relate to. And that's that's what people like. And I know that's like a help desk situation, but it's pretty much the same. People are still going to come up to you even when you're working in a SOC and they're going to start asking you questions. You still have to go to meetings, you still have to take phone calls, you still have to do all of that stuff that you do at the very basic level. So don't think that you're escaping help desk by getting into cybersecurity, it's just a, a more advanced help desk. Alrighty, number four on the list is vendor knowledge. And what I mean by this is whatever uh, security systems that you're using in your environment, be it some Cisco networking equipment, or you know, Windows Enterprise environment stuff like Azure or um, you know, your on-prem servers, or maybe it's like a checkpoint firewall system or a Palo Alto firewall system, maybe using Exabeam or maybe using Splunk, that sort of vendor knowledge. So um, I just broaden this subject out to every vendor that you might be using. The knowledge level that you need to have of your vendor is yeah, medium to high. So I'm gonna say that's a, a 6.5 on the knowledge level that you need of their products and their solutions. Possibly even seven, actually. I'm gonna put that as a seven. It's very, you need to know exactly what solutions are out there. Your hands-on skill level is also quite high and I'm gonna put that as a seven as well. Seeing as these products are probably the ones you're going to be using every single day, you need to know a little bit about them going into those jobs. So if, for example, you're applying for a company and uh, in your interview, you ask them, uh, they'll say at the end, oh, do you have any questions? This is where you ask them about their environment so that you can feel more comfortable going into the job if you are successful in getting it. Also telling people in the interview that you are interested in, in their uh, systems and you know, you know, saying to them basically that you're excited to join their company and you wanna learn more about what they've got so that when they do employ you, you'll go in there with a little bit of knowledge. So in that interview, ask them, What's your firewall system? Do you use like Splunk or Exabeam or what sort of logging software do you use? Is it a, a Windows environment or is it a Mac environment? Hopefully not. Is it a Linux environment? Who knows? I wanna know more about this. Tell me. That's the vendor knowledge that you wanna get across. And when you find out that in the interview, then you can go home and you can read about those specific products. That's definitely something I would do. And I know Checkpoint has like an online resource where you can read about all of their different products. It shows you all the different blades, their pricing models, not exact pricing because it's, it's different per country. And uh, yeah, the same is actually for Palo Alto. They have all these online resources that you can read through and find out how the system works and you'll get a sort of broad idea going in. So it's it's pretty good to know about that sort of stuff and hopefully you have some sort of like Cisco knowledge already or at least networking knowledge, your Linux knowledge like I said before um, and your people skills to sort of bring it all together. So yeah, that's basically what you need to get into cybersecurity. 
that's how good you need to be at each of those different areas and um, it, as you can see it's not really like security focused stuff right you can be an absolute gun at networking or you can be really good at Linux and it depends on what sort of area you're going into maybe you're going into networking in a, a SOC team or maybe you're going into your Linux uh, sys administration in a SOC team or just on its own who knows maybe you're going in as a sys admin first you don't want to go straight into security whatever it is these are the sort of levels of knowledge that you should have before getting in now just on things that you should know to get into cybersecurity you should definitely have a CompTIA A+, if you don't have any prior knowledge of IT. If you've already done a degree or a diploma or even a certificate, forget about the A+. It's really entry level basic stuff and um, it's not going to help you get a job in anything other than help desk. The most important one I would say is your CompTIA Security Plus and it's just a broad overview of what's out there in cybersecurity and security in general as well as infrastructure security and you know you sysadmin type security network security it's it's pretty broad that one but it's very good to have next up is your network plus or a ccna i personally prefer people with a ccna and i've always looked at people with ccnas higher than people with a network plus but that's a personal preference a lot of places are different you know, it doesn't really matter each way or the other, but I would say the CCNA is going to be better for getting you a job in networking as well as cybersecurity. The last one on the list is the CompTIA Linux Plus. Again, just a broad overview of Linux, how the systems work. If you want to become a Linux Sys Administrator, uh, this is a really good certification to get as well, but it's also really good to have for cybersecurity. I'm not saying that these certs are absolutely required, but the CCNA is probably the, and the Security Plus are probably the two most important ones out of this whole group. So yeah, that's my uh, list of things that you should do to become a cybersecurity engineer and how good at each of them you have to be. If you enjoyed this video, please do give me a thumbs up, subscribe for more, leave me a comment down below if you have any other ideas for things for maybe other people are looking to become a cybersecurity engineer and you've got some helpful comments for them. Throw it in the comments below. If you have any questions, chuck it in the comments. Join my Discord, buy some merch, all the other YouTube stuff. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.